is definitely setting up. You see like uh, Intel, for example, right? Got rejected three times in the same area. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessAtrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Can we talk about the latency, right? Can we, could all of us acknowledge what the hell is going on here? Is it me or every broker on the planet at the open is having a delay or pause, some, some, some sort of latency to disseminating prices at the word go? Now look, I traded some incredibly volatile markets before, 9-11, right? Uh, the mortgage mess. Are you telling me one share and four share accounts are so rabid at the open that there's latency everywhere? Wall Street, get your shit together. Anyway, guys, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, depending where you're watching this broadcast. Hope everybody uh, had a good day today. Um, weird day. I, I think that's the best way of saying it. Um, really, really weird day. So I, I had a very specific plan coming in today. Uh, if you watch the broadcast over the weekend, we had the first close on the IWM broke literally broke rising support, first time since September of, of 2020. You had selling nonstop for the last several weeks in high beta name, including the names that came out with their earnings, they were all sold, right? Everybody's telling me over the weekend, Dan, you gotta watch silver, you gotta watch silver. On, on, there's no day that should ever start out that silver is your top watch. I, I would rather not trade than silver being my top watch. All right. So that's out of the hand. So you had this really, really weird formula being set up for the day. And the market gapped up, right? And that was fine. And again, I, I tweeted out, and we talked about this uh, in, at the webinar this morning. I, I wanted to give, I don't want to call it the bears, but, but I wanted to give the sell side uh, the benefit of the doubt this morning, at least for the first two candles. For those of you guys who don't know uh, what two candles I'm talking about, I trade 60-minute uh, candles and only six of them throughout the day. So I, I wanted to give the sell bias just for my plan to kind of play out to see if it would actually come into fruition. And this was the, the weirdest freaking day, I, I think, in a long time. Not monetary-wise. There was nothing wrong. There was some pivots really went. Amazon really get aggressive. We'll, we'll talk about the individual pivots in a second. But what I thought that was really odd about this day, everything that should have happened went completely the opposite direction Stocks that should have stopped that supply, for example, a cash flow move, went right through it. We saw some incredible aggressive call buying going on. I'll talk about that in a second. But it just felt odd. You know, there's certain days that felt odd. But the craziest thing of all, the absolute craziest thing of all, we are in New I'm in New Jersey, right? We we're, we're literally have two feet of snow. I bought a generator in September. The reason why I bought a generator, I finally threw in the towel and I bought a generator. For the last year or so, we've had these really weird small storms. You know, a little rain knocks out power for a week. So I finally said, you know what, I'm just getting a generator. So I finally got a gener generator. We got two feet of snow. I still have power. Weird day. Incredibly weird day. So here's kind of what's happening here. If you guys watch the video uh, over the weekend, the one thing I kept on reiterating to the point of this, you're going to make some money. You're going to lose some money. There's always days that you're better. Uh, there's certain days that you're worse. But the one thing that we kind of talked about over and over again on the weekend update was this kind of gang mentality. You remember it's us versus them. We're going to put this out of business. So let's unify, do this, do that, do the other thing. And I've always maintained the point, and, and I think this was a very fair point over the weekend that you could buy whatever you want, right? You could buy whatever you want. No broker or anybody else should tell you how to allocate your money. And, but there's a big difference between us versus them or stabbing yourself in the throat repeatedly. And unfortunately, you know, when I spoke to my son over the weekend, dad, you got to buy AMC, right? Why, why Nate? Why would you even say that? TikTok. Okay. Top watch GME. You know, GME just went from like 30 to, to 500. Top watch GME. 
And the, the moral of the story is, you know, we continue to be, and when I say we, human beings continue to be their own worst enemies. And it, it, it's fine to have conviction. It's fine to have uh, some sort of, you know, some sort of stance that you want to take. But never take a stance when it is so obviously painful going to be against you. And unfortunately, again, retail got their piece of the pie, right? Last week, they did what they had to do. And unfortunately, the hold the liners and all that stuff, they're getting absolutely murdered today. Uh, after the close, you see GameStop uh, trading in the 180. Uh, AMC, again, you know, top watch, right? TikTok says top watch. The stock is... Uh, traded down to 11. So again, guys, there's a time and a place to take a stand for everything. But like I said, every single day, if you're ever going to take that shot, make sure it's technically not because you're fighting against the machine or you're trying to prove a point. At the end of the day, there's a reason why the machine is still a machine. So guys, just be very careful. I know a lot of you guys, unfortunately, got caught up with this whole you know, us versus them mentality. And unfortunately, again, you see what's going on after hours right now. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of good uh, people, hardworking people just got caught up in the excitement and, and they are seeing um, some really aggressive uh, prices being taken down. So again, uh, is it a learning lesson? You know, some lessons just don't need to be learned because all you need to do is kind of listen to folks who kind of been there uh, before. So hopefully, uh, all jokes aside, hopefully everybody uh, is staying uh, well. Um, what I thought, what I, what I liked what I saw today, okay, was the idea that Beta actually made a stand, okay? Your Amazons of the world, your Netflixes of the world, NVIDIA woke up, Roku woke up, Tesla woke up. And ironically, I was looking at Tesla. This was one of my, this was literally one of my top plays. <laughs> this is literally going to be my top play of the day uh, before the upgrade this morning. We, and I was watching this uh, 780 level over the weekend, and hell, this thing would have confirmed 780. It was a really big move. But again, this is why we talk about you have a plan, you have to wait for it to confirm. You don't guess, you don't anticipate, you wait for things to confirm. And now all of a sudden, Tesla reclaimed this whole macro range, and now it's literally like a day away from getting at the top of the ranges. And you saw some notable uh, call activity th today. Um, the 900 weeklies came out, the 875 weeklies came out. So there's betters, right? There's betters back in the name. Uh, Amazon. Right. They report tomorrow. And the big question was, can Amazon finally, make, you know, maybe kind of wake everything up? I, the big buzz is, you know, everybody wants them to split their stock. Obviously, you know, it, you know, at first I was like, well, why split their stock? There's a reason why institutions like buying this thing. There's, there's lack of retail. But at some point, you know, you have a stock that's you know, going to be completely untradeable. You know, at times when you look at the level two on Amazon, you might love the setup and you're looking at a three to four dollar spread with a hundred shares in each lot. So you can literally take the offer and be down four or five points right away. And if you get a bad, you know, bad move in the futures market at the same time you're buying the stock, you'd be down 15, 20 dollars in absolute seconds. So cross our fingers, cross our toes. Hopefully, uh, you know, after tomorrow's earnings, they will uh, split their stock. I, I, I think I can speak for everybody. I think this is this is the one who really deserves it. And again, I don't know about, you know, 10 to 1, 20 to 1, at least 3 to 1. You know, take it back down, you know, 1,100, you know, 1,200 bucks, something like that. I don't, you know, I don't need 10 to 1, 5 to 1. Give, give us at least a 3 for 1 split. Give us something that can at least attract uh, some more liquidity. Just kind of narrow the spreads. Everybody wants to be in this thing. It's a, it's a monster. So uh, tomorrow we will see if there are um, if there are more uh, aggressive buyers coming in ahead of earnings, stepping in ahead of earnings, you can see here, uh, this is very, very close, at least from the macro wise before they report tomorrow evening, that if they could just reclaim uh, the December 29 highs, maybe has one more push uh, ahead of earnings. I think the weirdest bet that I saw today, not just one bet, but, but, but several bets, was FUBU, right? So if you guys remember, FUBU had this really big run last week. Um, I even believe, and I, I could be wrong, but I even believe that Citron got bullish uh, at this thing at some point, whatever it was. But we saw some re really weird bets today. There were buyers coming in, not, not just like 10, 15 grand. There was a buyer that came in for the February 19 calls, excuse me, February 90 calls. Okay, the stock is at $52. He came in for the February 19, the expiration 219, 90 calls for 750 grand. He came later 
for another three, four hundred thousand dollars for the same expiration, but the 85s. So basically, somebody's coming out and saying, I'm willing to put to drop one point one million dollars in premium for this stock. Oh, by the way, almost doubles uh, in the next two weeks. Just saying, you know, the, these people, they are very uncertain, right? They're not uncertain. So, for example, a guy came in this morning and he bought he bought the, the 230, I think he bought the 235 weekly puts and he dropped $6 million on the premium, right? $6 million on the premium drop this morning. You saw the stock going all the way down, like real, excuse me, went all the way down initially to that 220 level. So the options market really is aggressive on certain aims. And when something stands out so aggressively, um, you know, like a $6 million bet on the weekly puts on GME or this FUBU play, um, that is getting very, very interesting. And you can see here on the daily chart, right? It's just very, very close to really jumping and getting aggressive. So we have to watch this thing, uh, especially on dips. If this thing dips in the next couple of days and we continue to see these buyers coming in for, you know, the 85, 90 calls, man, you know, a brother got to play, right? A brother definitely got to play. So we got to keep an eye on that. Other than that, you know, beta is definitely setting up. You see like uh, Intel, for example, right? Got rejected three times in the same area. Very, you know, very, you know, very interesting chart. You got Roku waking up, right? Testing the 10 day moving average. If it could just get above this channel here, it could wake up. Tesla, again, I, this was my number one short idea coming into today's session. Again, who cares? If you're in this business and, you, you know, you, it's all about getting likes and all about being right, you're in the wrong business. It's all about price action. So all of a sudden, just like on a dime, this thing not only did not confirm Friday's price action, but it started reclaiming levels. So if Tesla can just reclaim this 10-day moving average, maybe it wakes up again. So there's a lot of value every single day when you're doing your prep work. The question is always not, you know, not whether it's right or wrong technically. The question is how many things are actually going to confirm, and that's always the case of being a non-biased trader. Again, you have an opinion. You did your research, you put in the work, but you can't paint yourself in the corner because if you do, you're gonna be fighting price action. And the most important part is you're gonna be bleeding money until you're right. And the, the end game is always the same. Can you be right before you lose your solvency, right? And that's kind of the name of the game. And that's unfortunately what happened to uh, players in GME, both long and short, uh, AMC, both long and short, so forth and so on. So again, it's not about being right. It's not, it's about being profitable or at least not going uh, on tilt. And that's a very, very important part of this type of environment that is so juiced up uh, mentally and so emotionally charged up. And a lot of people are just focusing on, you know, let's stand together, it's unified, it's us versus them instead of actually uh, taking the price action for what it was. So let's talk about uh, today's pivots uh, again. I was watching for the IWM, right? This, this is like, you know, I was watching. I go, listen, if this thing goes red, and it, the funny thing is the early value in the morning today was all on the short side. They, things really got pulled. At, at one point, the Dow was up like 350 or so. You saw really good pulls today in Facebook, uh, in Netflix, uh, in Plug, right? You saw really good, really aggressive pulls. So in a weird way, you could be wrong on the indexes and still be uh, and still be technically right. So let's talk about this. So IWM, uh, we were watching obviously green to red. Never got there. Matter of fact, IWM not only had a good day, it reclaimed all levels of supply. Again, this market is bananas, absolutely bananas. Uh, and sometimes you just turn around and say, I have no idea what's going on. And that's me turning around right now saying, I have, I'm clueless. I'm absolutely clueless. I have uh, some long plays for, um, for my watch for tomorrow. I have some short plays when I'm watching. But honestly, I am, I am completely clueless. Uh, this market is so damn random. Um, and the most important part is you have to patiently wait to see uh, what confirms. So let's talk about the action. Everybody, right? Social media, top watch, SLV is break. Okay. SLV went up like 40 cents. And I said, look, this is really not my thing. So it took out 27.40, went to like 28 and just got destroyed. Just basically anybody who bought it after the open got hit. Uh, FUBU, 47.75, 48 needs to build. Got upgraded this morning. Again, FUBU, really, really big move. Uh, the catalyst came. It traded, it traded actually as high as the $54 
uh, after the close. Uh, yeah, watch those buyers, guys. Watch those out of the money call buyers if they continue to call back. Uh, TSIA SPAC name uh, fifteen eighty. Excuse me, fourteen eighty fifteen needs to build. Here was uh, TSIA, right? Close pretty much at the highs. Um, I think if this thing gets above 16, it should go more. So keep an eye on this TSIA for tomorrow, but almost a dollar move there. Uh, ADMS, nobody had a chance to, uh, to trade. It opened up at 625, we actually ran to 750, got halted, some sort of FDA news, and stock went to like nine and change actually, but I'm, I'm pretty confident to say nobody uh, got this trade. Uh, plug I shorted, got some pretty good cash flow right away. Uh, 6230, 62 for builds below can flush. Here was plug, right? Here was plug traded, you know, traded down initially into the 6120s, uh, and then all the way down to the 60 area before kind of reclaiming. You know, again, flush is a flush is a flush. Uh, Amazon, and, and again, this is how weird this tape was. I, the initial response was, look, 3260 for cash flow move. Report tomorrow. Now, what's cash flow on Amazon? 20 points, 15 points. Yeah, Amazon, hold my beer. Amazon got above, right? Amazon got above this 3260 and is almost at 3350. Just a sick, sick move. I know a lot of you guys are still holding calls. If we could just clear out this channel, one more move tomorrow ahead of earnings could give a nice move uh, ahead of the release of numbers tomorrow. Uh, so if you're still holding a good job there, uh, AG for uh, 24 needs to build. It traded literally uh, to 24. Uh, NVIDIA 519 for builds below can flush. Here was NVIDIA. The funny thing is I actually like NVIDIA to, to the upside tomorrow. Uh, but here was the 519 flush, right? Here's the 519, and it went down to 516 before a nice reversal. So that's how weird this day was. You're actually getting value uh, to, the, to the downside here as well. So take on the way down, take on the way up. Uh, monster move. Neo, not a big move. Uh, 55 held twice if it builds below can flush. Here was Neo, not a big move at all. So it, it broke the 55, uh, went down to like 5430s, and then it stuck. Uh, came back up again markets very very strong now if you caught it for cash flow got good job Here's this little sucker uh, NAK for all you small cap lovers any close over 6970 is good NAK had a nice little move uh, Really nice move. So here is the 6970 and the stock only went to 85 cents actually pretty pretty amazing for you if you uh, if you traded this thing uh, really good move there well, you know, What a move um, and I believe That's it right? I think that's it. So look, it, it's a crazy tape. Um, you know, <laughs> what else can you say? I mean, it, it's very, very hard to, you know, to really try to digest everything that happens on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, tomorrow I'll watch Tesla. You know, I'll watch NVIDIA. I'll watch Intel. More NVIDIA than Tesla, let's be honest. Uh, we'll watch Amazon for another spike. But again, can anything happen? Anything does and everything will. Guys, God bless. I wish you the best. Stay safe, everybody. I'll see you tomorrow.